immediately the color barrier. Wasn't the yellow brother against the brown skinned brother, the dark skinned brother. We had that in the Nate Smith song. We had people condemning each other because they were light skinned, calling them, I'm a mud man. The brother who had an education. Some of y'all don't know, August Wilson was with us. He used to be in our Pittsburgh mark. The great writer, August Wilson. We attracted all kinds. He was half cocaine. I mean, Man Muhammad told us, get rid of that. Take you to Joseph's coat of many colors. And as soon as the African American eliminate this color complex and stop getting drunk, y'all even going back to black, uh, y'all you know, back to good hair, bad hair now. I thought all hair was good. I sure, I sure wish I had a little bit more of it. Uh, we're still talking that talk. So we obviously know that the black flag did not mean anything. And so Imam Muhammad started a campaign to study the effects of slavery. That's the, one of the first of the 17 things that we have to start. I'm, I, I got it online. Here, we're we, we going we to finish this up in April, but we're going to get as much of this material. I'm coming back in April. I want each and every one of you to bring Sally Neckbone, Reverend Hoop, no, 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 I, I love you too. <laughs> but bring your neighbor, bring your friend. I am a living example of witnessing people being transformed. Listen to this message because it transformed me. So should I be a selfish person and don't want them to listen to this message? How do you think Malcolm got transformed? All of a sudden he just got out of jail? No, he had a transforming language environment. And he was taken to a universal example through Imam Warakdin Muhammad. And he writes about it. They take that out of the book now. Huh? They lie about that. Huh? He was lying when he told y'all that he knew the white men, men were, were Muslim. He was playing fiction. It was a promotional scam. Huh? He knew that. What did the lesson say? <laughs> How long does it take? Y'all finish it. I ain't forgot mine. Some of y'all never studied it. <laughs> How long does it take? 35 to 40 years for, for him to study? Be call himself a Muslim son? Hmm? There are Caucasians in Europe and in the Balkan state. Message to the black man. You know, I found a lot of y'all hard so why it's so difficult to teach you. You don't even know the nation. It's just hearsay. It would make it easier to transit and I had somewhere to talk to you from. Yes. So it was very easy because I was a student of the nation, and I'm not lying to you. February 26, 1975, I came to Chicago to prove that the Ambalaj Muhammad was not dead. I didn't come there. But to listen to Imam Muhammad, I thought the Ambalaj Muhammad would not die. We were told he would live how many years? 900 years. Right. And when he got tired of living, he would just eat himself to death. I didn't know he was near death for the last 10 years. Until I found out the brothers who worked at the house. People worked at 40, 47, 40, 45. They knew that. But we believed that. And we were sincere. Most of us, some weren't. Somebody said, well, I never did believe that. Well, you're a liar. <laughs> you know what? You don't believe this today. <laughs> That's the logic. Prophet Muhammad said, those who believe to the foremost, right? Didn't he say that? That's right. yeah. In the days of ignorance, the foremost today. You're a crook back then, you're a crook now. <laughs> you have a history of crookery. <laughs> The woman married God. Sister came to me. She complained about the brother. He's a cheater. You met him cheating. <laughs> <laughs> you were cheating with him. <laughs> now you say he's a cheater. I said, it's a, I said, I said, sister, it's a great, it's a great revelation. <laughs> Where did you discover that? <laughs> See. An imam or preacher of any sort should be truthful. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, I was talking to someone who's producing a movie about one of our figures, and I said to them, you know what? Well, I said, why you haven't heard about my teaching me? Because we tell the truth. Mm 
And people want lies to be told. They don't want you to get a healthy picture of society. And to one of my detractors there in London, let me just speak to you. He said, you are very confused because you go in the church in the mosque. <laughs> Maybe you should go back to playing basketball. <laughs> but it's all fair. Yeah, because I work with all people, I got to be confused. I'm, I'm clear. People of faith, and I'm sincere with them. I'm not going to represent myself as a Muslim. And then tell you that God came in the person of Farad Muhammad, to whom praises due forever, and that you, I was on the mothership. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to tell you that the white man is the devil. Meanwhile, I got a white person in my family, quote white, a son-in-law or daughter-in-law. Can't do it. Can't lie. Huh? If I say I'm a Muslim, I expect you to be a Muslim. And I also expect you all to be at, <laughs> if you say you're sincere, I know some of y'all go on cruises. I ain't knocking it. I was in the neighborhood had enough water, but that's another story. But let me just tell you all, you should be at the Savior's Day. And these liars who opening having things February, uh, they, they're doing something 24th, 25th, 26th. I'm going to tell you something. Got some brothers coming out of jail. They finding the truth. Yes. They're gonna be very angry with you. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm telling you, I ain't threatening you. <laughs> that people are becoming awake. I know some of these brothers. They've had deceptive leaders inside of our community who took money from them while they were committing crime. And don't think that what you see this small number may be here now, this is going to grow more people here now than I saw last time. And there's going to be more coming. And I'm telling you, just the fact that I want city council, a lot of them just getting more curious. And I'm telling you, I'm saying this to our audience in, 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 in Linden. We're getting as much support from the Caucasians, the Haitians are really African people and others, and we have gotten from some of our own African American people. Right. Because you're still too sick, you're still too jealous, you're still too envious. Yes, okay. That's yes. yes. You all excuse me, mm -hmm. brother. No, I was ready to teach another five hours, but no, <laughs> <laughs> I recognize this is a Super Bowl day, and my leader. <laughs> Y'all may throw a chicken wing at me. <laughs> Imam Muhammad assigned us responsibility and put together a nine part committee assignment. Gave us committees. Got us to thinking as a governmental unit, not as a messianic unit. A messianic unit that one man gonna solve all your problems. No. Messianic has been a mess for us. We've gone from one leader to the other without going to a concept. And Imam Muhammad told us, February 26, 1975, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was not a flesh and blood body. He was a will body. He was a mind and he was a spirit. See, that's important. Imam Muhammad is a mental body, a will body, and a spirit body. And he is a body and competent. I tell you, the expert on Imam W.D. Muhammad is Imam W.D. Muhammad II. Well, well, now, let's just be honest. Isn't that real? Yeah. Huh? He, now, the Imam had four or five conversations. He would have you. He would have the close guys. They not them here no more, so I can't get them to verify nothing I'm saying. <laughs> They're too much of a liars and too scary a weakness to be here. They would be a, this would be the meeting, they'd be all around bringing them water, bringing them this, bringing them that, all that. They've disappeared. So he would talk to them. Then he would go and he had some even closer associates. You know? 
None of them are here either. One of them is coming out of jail to be the new leader of all of us. The Messiah, he's arriving from the federal penitentiary. <laughs> so, we will welcome him in the back room and we will certainly help him to adjust I've seen so many government out of prison, they ready to liberate those. You ain't got nothing to liberate, but mm. that, that eight by four sale ain't, ain't taught you very much. Mm. And the fact that you put yourself in that position, you ain't qualified to even lead yourself, so we ain't worried about you. But he went and then he was discussed with those associates. Mm. Then the drivers. Mm. Now, what do you think if I come home? Now, some of my children, I ain't gonna talk to them about nothing, but other than, hey man, is the dinner ready to clean the bathroom? <laughs> By the way, the, 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 I see that garbage over here. There's nothing to talk to them about. But if I find a child of mine that is interested and is not challenging me, I have one. He's a nice brother. But he's always telling me, Daddy, did you know you know that? I got your contest with me. I said, not only do I know that, son, I know the person. I know that. But you know, he's an internet scholar, so he's a good internet. But if I saw a son, that is interested in me, and he's obedient to me, and he's respectful to me, and he's studying my ways. Don't you think I would get, pull the treasures out to him? Yeah. Especially if Imam W. Muhammad, when he would teach even idiots that Imam Alfred didn't have the patience to even talk to him. And sometimes I would tell these guys, I knew they didn't mean that any good. Get the hell out of here, man. <laughs> That's why I'm not very popular around here. Because <laughs> I would do it. And if he told me to get rid of you, buddy, you'd be gotten rid of. A few of them out there now that know me. They know, oh, Alfred, oh, Alfred. One of them said, he'll bust his mother. I said, yes, I would if she was wrong. <laughs> now, I'm not a mean person. I'm a just person. But the work, this work of this community is more important than any individual. Because it's the will of God. God, we, our ancestors prayed for this. Not for us to be black drunks. Huh? But for us to be liberators. Huh? To be people that will liberate the world. Do you know we Muslims, African Americans, should be the biggest opposers of the sex traffickers? Hmm? They're slaves right here in America. You brothers got these big muscles. You thugs and love to be that. Ready to bust up somebody's head. Why don't you bust one of these pimps upside the head? And let me tell you. Instead of FOI would be the fruit of Islam. I don't want to be no fruit. Fruit spoil. In some circles you get called a fruit. <laughs> So this language has been corrected. Imam Muhammad, Muslim men, mm -hmm. huh? We didn't want our women being called girls. That's right. Come on. Hmm? Because those lessons were answered. What? Any, any, anybody here uh, uh, from the near correct? <laughs> near correct. That's why I said 196 million, 940,000, nearly 200,000. Everything in the lesson was near correct. 24,896, near, because that would be one would have to come and complete it. So he calls men. And I just thought about that. A, a, a wise brother gave me the idea, blight arrest pioneer patrol. I'm not moving no. But the biggest blight, y'all ready for it? I have to tell you, the biggest blight, had been the criminals in the nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. Well, in some cities we had bank robbers. Yes. One minister told the people, he said, brother, when your brother come out of jail, I love that brother. That's why I said, ain't that I don't love it. Some of y'all get up and leave, I don't care. He would give them a pistol in the Quran mm -hmm. and said, do for self. Mm -hmm. huh? So that's why we got to walk backward to America and start teaching to correct 
the image of criminality. And Imam Muhammad arrested that, got rid of that. It was no longer proved. Had he not done that, I tell you what would have happened. They had a plan to lock every one of us up. So it was Imam W.D. Muhammad that saved the nation of Islam. Don't come telling me he destroyed the nation of Islam and Mr. Farrakhan rebuilt it. Now, Imam Muhammad rebuilt the nation of Islam in his purity. For people like Usman and all the other sincere believers who came in the 40s, the 50s, and a few of us who came in the 60s. Huh? Many of us came with said loud, I'm black and I'm proud. And there you have the Bloods, the Crips, the Grips, and every other kind of group that came out of there. Now, human pride. And the man start working on his problem right at 7341. Huh? Everything that you needed to build a community, the nine committees, ways and means, giving us a picture ever in our mind's eye. Now I'm hoping that our convention will be just like that. Not a bunch of nonsense hustlers who got selling tapes, workshops. I know one of them got mad with me because I was beside no the program because he didn't get a chance to get up and give us a nonsensical presentation, get people drunk on Arabism. Huh? Don't think I'm not I am not going to be satisfied myself till I'm fluent in reading the Quran. I know and I can read the Quran. But if I can't translate it, and talk to people, then ain't nothing but a phony and a hustler. Hmm? It's just like me saying I'm going to Chicago. Every yeah, the sign I stop and just hug Chicago sign. Oh man! I'm going to Chicago. Chicago. That's how it is to study the Arabic language. If you don't understand, it's destiny. This is the book for the right minded people, but also a book of what? Guidance on how to be a what? The highest purpose for human life and existence is community life. Every one of the five pillars, it's all about building community life. In fact, four in particular. I'll lead the fifth one off, which is fasting, a lot of that's for him. But you don't really worship a law. And their brother told me, I said, I invite people to come to Juma. And when I invite them to come to Juma, I teach. He said, well, you can't, can't do that. Juma, Juma is for worship. I said, how does a cat worship Allah? By being a cat. We worship Allah because our nature is an intellect in a spirit. And we fasten our spirit to Allah's will by learning what he wants for us. And doing it, and by and the answer test of how we treat human beings and what we form community. <laughs> Only reason y'all are complaining about the sacred holes that the president calls our places, and I'm gonna tell you, I'll be honest with the president. I don't care what he said. They asked for a resolution to be passed by the city council, and say I'm not gonna go into city council. And they, I know what they think. Uh, this Muslim, he gonna come and go. He's singing the blues. I said I could care less about the resolution. I said, I want to be straight up and honest. If the president said we were the greatest people on the face of the planet Earth and we could leap to the moon, I wouldn't care. If he said we were the worst, I wouldn't care. That's your problem. You're still caught up in a white Christian concept. And I'm not talking about Christianity, dear people. I'm talking about a concept where you locked in, not the true living Christ that dwells within each and every one. And I'm certainly not talking about Jesus Christ. Peace be on you. But that you get caught up and you see the white man as a God figure and you so caught up in him as a God figure, you think what he thinks. I want him to like me. I ain't no man going to like me. You. you don't even want your child to be just like you. So you know how Caucasian respect you and when you stand, produce for self, be yourself and say, I'm going to take on responsibility in American life. And I have a right in America just like everybody else does. Wow. A responsibility like everybody else does. And I'm hoping when we have our convention, we can bring the better minds of our people to that convention of all African American people. And we ain't doing it for black folk. There ain't no black convention. It's a Muslim convention because I want to see the public to see Imam Debbie Dean Muhammad, one of the 
natives of this city, African American, a high African American intellectual, Harvard man, Glenn Cartman Lowry, professor at Brown University, asked me, said, would you perform my wedding, man? Yeah, of course I would. <laughs> Get married, right? Munch said, you got to perform a wedding for him. She said, yeah, he wants me. He thinks enough of me. Because I'd heard one of his tapes. He said, Tommy he had the, y'all should listen to his tape. He has a tape. He's considered to be a black conservative. He wrote it in a speech. And he says that, talked about the chaos that goes on in our homes and how black lives matter. He said, but outside of my door was Muhammad's speech self. So if a man like that who reverence us and respect us asks me to perform his wedding, what do you think I'm going to do? I went there and performed it. He said, I want you to wear, I don't have no regalia, I don't do, do I, but I did put a kufi on because Imam Muhammad, when he was a non-Muslim environment, to distinguish yourself, so I had a kufi. I like to have a hat design. Some of you fashion people, I like to, design, have a, like, like to have a special hat that I would wear. We should by now have something designed of our own, our own fashions, our own taste. Yeah? You know, one person out there finished the witness, where's the bean pie, brother? <laughs> but you know, I performed it before large gatherings of African Americans. They want to see how we live. Some will want it, some may not want it. And that's fine with me, those who don't want it, and no force. Anyway. But some really will want it. That's America. That's the beauty of this country. That a Muslim, but we did, and let me tell you something, we did a whole lot of work to make it happen. So don't minimize it. Don't come here tearing America down. I ain't picking up the immigrant's banner to destroy America, how evil it is, not bad you. And you'd be surprised if some of them have hypocritical statements about Americans. Right. They would tell you in public, That's right. that, uh, 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 say all kinds of good things in a faith gathering, but behind the back they hate this country. Right. I love it because I ain't had nowhere else to go, and I'm glad and I'm the newest inhabitants of America. Even if I could find the genes of where I came from, I, I know what would happen if I went to one of them, one of them African places where I supposed to come from. They said, man, you ain't bring me no money? Come on over to my house. <laughs> And they put some glass in my food, and I wouldn't make it back to them. And they would be right. What the hell I look like going to Africa asking them for something when we see that others have come in Africa and raped it? We should wake up. Y'all gonna invite me back to April? I want to come back in April to finish this up. Yes. Did I? It's your home. Yes, sir. April, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back. But you know what y'all got to do? Y'all got to fill these seats up. The leader has a big responsibility. He has a lot of work. There's a lot of work you don't know about. I've traveled with him. He has many national responsibilities. The wives of this country ain't inviting Imam Huhu. No, they don't do that. They invite the person that sits in the, in the seat. There's a line. Started with the Army Lodge Muhammad, really natively started with the Army Lodge Muhammad. Army Lodge Muhammad, Mr. Frog gave the Army Lodge Muhammad a prescription. And the Army Lodge Muhammad filled that prescription. And Imam Muhammad corrected that prescription. And it says that the patient took this medicine. It indicated that that patient would have perfect health. And you know what, we are, we, we are in a very Good shape. We in better shape than anybody else on the planet Earth. And I tell you this, as I close, we are not blessed and highly favored. We are blessed and most favored. There's nobody on the planet Earth has what we have. That's right. Nobody. And again, I don't, I don't, I spend a lot of time, but I spend a lot of time in the heavens with the wisest. You know, I was with a big, big governor. I won't tell you what state he was. And he knew about me. Now, he didn't know me. He really probably didn't know me, but he knows what I represent. See? 
And our mayor insisted when I was sworn in that said he's an imam. People said, why you don't hide from that? Why should I? <laughs> That's what I am. <laughs> and I got it from the most honorable man that lived on the planet Earth, Muhammad, here in this city in 1978 in this county. Imam Muhammad appointed me to be an imam and told me to move into the National House. I got a sign. And the National House of 4845, the only room that was vacant in that house was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's room. Sign! And I tell you this, I've gotten all of this. If some of you only knew how, the troubles I had coming here, as of yesterday this time, I, no, I was on the plane this time, close to it. Everything went wrong Friday. Everything. And I'm a little vain. I ain't gonna lie to you now. That's about to give me. My teeth had cracked. I had to get too sick. I said, how am I gonna go? I put the committee together, my children. I said, son, what should I do? They said, daddy, you can't go with no choppers. <laughs> I asked everybody, they said, don't go. One brother who didn't have any teeth, he said, go anyway. <laughs> oh, praise you a lot. And you know what? I, 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 Sister Robin, when I sent you the text message begging for April, I don't think you'd comprehend what I was going through. <laughs> you have to be clear. But, huh? I said, you have to be clear. But you know what? The first message I was telling, I was going through hell. They were taking my sister that, but your message was came clear. You said, can you make it? I said, yeah, I can make it. I got it. <laughs> and that's why I came. Because this is the most important thing. I can get somebody to stay with my sister. I can't get this again. This opportunity to serve this community, the greatest people on earth who are going to lead America back into the light, that's going to lead the African people back into the light, that's going to actually lead, bring El Islam back. That's right. Because El Islam is dead. The favor of God is not upon them. Favor of God, you are the most favorite people on earth. I definitely will find a way. That it was Rob. I'm telling you, I, I, Miss Red, if you're looking at this broadcast, I want you to know. Only decent hero in the whole story in the state of Maryland was a young lady named Adrian Red. And I promise you, I'm going to say this on TV. I called it. Every office. They must rip my sister off for eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Tell me you in here nurses. You know that after a certain number of days you stay in the nursing home, you pay eight hundred dollars a day. Mm -hmm. After sixty days. And my sister has a home and they want they will take everything she has. Right. And the other people are taking that just picked her clean. Mm -hmm. She's ninety years old. Then pull herself up by not a bootstrap, by a shoestring, mm -hmm. or by a soul, mm -hmm. being from a maid to becoming a nurse's aide, going on to being the LPN and the registered nurse. In fact, she was John Hinckley's nurse, the guy who shot Reagan okay. at St. Elizabeth. Okay. Now, she ain't gonna give up no control. And I went to the hospital when she told me, I said, uh, well, Doctor, you're gonna do this. And she said, Shut up! You're nothing but a baby. And let me tell you, sir, with my age, I accept the baby status. <laughs> I love it. I said, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And she told me one time to leave. She said, company is coming. You can't stay. <laughs> but I have relatives. Now, I'm from a family of 13. You tell me we don't need healing. You tell me we don't need to address our problem. We have sisters right in Prince George County. Ain't done a damn thing for that sister. Praying probably that she loses everything. That's among us. The law will not change the condition of people till they change what's troubling them. So we can't go out here blasting the white man. We need to start blasting each other and calling each other back to consciousness, to righteousness. You can pray all you want. You can sing all the hymns you want to. You Christians. And some of you even Jews, whatever you are, if you're not treating your fellow person right, you lying, making up stories, 
telling you, y'all don't want to get me started. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to, Allah is giving us, God is giving us opportunity to speak to more and more of our people. And I can tell you something. Our place is going to fill up. We're down in the area, I don't want to name that area. And we start teaching. There were eight people in the room. Now all of a sudden, the place was packed with seven. So they begin to respond. Because I'm responding to the caller who called us to faith, saying, believe in your Lord, trust in your Lord. That's what Imam Muhammad told us. We've heard a caller calling us to faith. Now, if you say you're faithful, you should stick, run in here, say I'm supporting the mosque kids. That's right. Huh? Because the mosque kids is going to win. I'm telling you. It's going to win. And they're going to be the most successful institution on the planet Earth. Says Alfred Muhammad, a country boy from Lynchburg, Virginia. And I believe that's prophecy. And remember, Muhammad was the prophet. Every one of you have prophecy in you. Huh? He is a Qatam Nabi. We don't know prophecy. I don't want to make that clear. We're not talking about no human being coming up and call up no revelation. But all of us have an intuitive, prophetic that God let us see a poor. It's only by his permission. And I'm seeing this community growing, growing, growing. New faces. Y'all come. Y'all come back next month. But let's let's make sure we go to New Orleans. Friday, Juma, message that rock mine. Maybe after Juma. Then uh, Saturday, Southern University, one of our most important universities. The largest African American university, actually is in Baton Rouge, but they have a campus in, in, in New Orleans. And I'm hoping that at, at our national convention, those of you alumni of those schools, they will come and exhibit. Let's push the historical African American colleges and universities. Huh? So we're going to be at Southern, and we have the Savings Day commemorative program from 1.15 to 4 p.m and have a Hadid uh, Award Night of Jazz. Let's come. Be in the Big Easy. <laughs> Just before the Mardi Gras. Y'all pray for I don't know how I'm going to get there. But Dr. King said, I may not get there with you. But I believe we're going to get to the promise. I believe we're going to get to New Orleans. And uh, I think Brother Elam, any of y'all want these the, the DVDs or the CDs of this address? If you give your name, we'll send it to you. But we appreciate your support. For it, for by it support what we're trying to do, and all we're trying to do is spread this message to everybody. I don't go to messages very much. This is one of my places I always come to, but I'm here trying to reach the general public to have them heard this message because they've been done for me what it has done, and it made me tremendous. It made people that never would have taken a look at me, look at me, because I'm an exponent. I'm clear where I come from. Mm -hmm. And I just closed it by saying I was at a great gathering, great African-American leaders, all politicians, all elected officials. And somebody said to me, they said, you know, you never mentioned the Honorable Elijah Muhammad or you mentioned Imam Muhammad. So I said, must be somebody that know us, the said is. And I told him, yes, well, I said, you know, y'all y'all having your spirits. I said, man, if you with your spirits, right? <laughs> I was spirit, but I said, I don't wear my religion on my, on my sleeve. That's right. And I told him, and he told me who his brother was. And I said, oh, you're talking about so-and-so and so-and-so and from so-and-so and so-and-so. He said, yes. So, never know. We're everywhere. And a whole lot of our people are watching us. Do we have time for two questions? We have some guests here, people that I haven't seen. Don't come to challenge, because you will be destroyed. Uh, <laughs> that's morning, all right? Okay. Question. Okay. No. no.